Without the foundation, heal, sit, stay, and come when I call you, I couldn't have done any of that. Hey guys, this week Ben and Logan have whipped up a little tidbit for you. It's from a DeerFest seminar that we did. And you can watch the whole seminar if you want to see it on in video. You can watch it on our YouTube channel. But they pulled out a segment that I think was a good one. It talks about training dogs for multiple things and how I don't like to compartmentalize the training. Uh, I get this question quite a bit. I actually answered this question twice in email this week. And so we're going to put it together as a podcast, and I'll probably send those people a link to this once it goes live. So appreciate the support. Thank you guys for doing this. Um, do me a favor. If you like what you're listening to, please give us a review uh, and share it with someone that you think it might help. Appreciate it and enjoy. So if you're starting on a pup, yeah. like you said, you bird hunted these yep. and shed hunted. Yep. So would a pup do you train for both at the same time? or? That's a great question. So... The foundation remains the same, regardless of what we're training for in the end, for the field. So, yes, I don't take much of a different approach. What does dictate some differences is the calendar, not necessarily based on time, but based on seasons. So, like, if I'm going to, you know, Ellie's a good example. Ellie, I do upland, we do gun dog work, she shed hunts, she doesn't track. Taylor does everything. But I don't track with her. And so if, I, if she were younger right now, so we're going into the fall, so if she was around maybe a year old right now, I probably would have worked on the same, very similar stuff, whether she was going to track this fall or not, or she was going to be a bird dog this fall or not. I probably am spending most of my time on the same foundational stuff. He'll sit, stay, and come when I call you. Like that's the other part of our video series is we did a puppy video and we did a foundation video and I don't care what direction you're going with your dog in the end, those two are n mandatory. You got to be able to do everything in those to be able to do it down here. So the, pretty much the same stuff, but if the dog's a year old, for me personally, that's probably a little early unless they're a really, really exception to the rule. My dogs probably aren't bird hunting that early. I just don't think they're ready. They haven't had a chance to see enough. They haven't had a chance to get far enough along to be prepared for what they're probably gonna see in the blind. And I can't control what happens in the field when we're hunting. So I can control the training part the best I can. So if she's a gun dog, I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna gun dog, I'm not gonna do bird stuff with her that fall. Tracking though, I probably would. Because, but what I would do is I'd do it very calculated. I'd put her on opportunities to find dead deer not wounded deer, not maybe dead deer, it would be dead deer. So I'd have a group, I'd have a message out to all of my buddies that hunt, hey, if you shoot a deer, you shoot a doe or whatever, early season, and you know it's dead, you hit it really well, if you do me a favor, I'd like to put the dog on and let the dog find it. Those are great opportunities that I, they're better than what I can replicate in training. And so what I would do leading up to that is, I would have spent like August, maybe a little of July, maybe a six to eight week window of, we're going to focus a little more on preparing for that September bow season. And I'd put her on some tracks in September. But so, yeah, that would drive me to that because it's this time of year. Now, if it were December or January and the dog was a year old, I'd say, you know what? Shed season is about two or three months away. The foundation has to be there. But in order for the foundation to be there, so this is a drill that I do to teach dogs to start picking up antlers off the ground. Heel. So you saw how I lined the dog for food. You saw how I lined the dog for the retrieve. Heel. So what a dog will quickly find out is, and it's real easy for him. When you throw something for a dog, it's predator prey. It's just chase it down, go get it, bring it back. Heel. What's not natural for a dog is steadiness. This goes back to a nice little gun dog. I like dogs that are quiet, calm, and steady in the blind if I'm, if I'm hunting with them. This is a drill I do with gun dogs. We, we, I rarely throw marks for my dogs. I don't throw many marks. My dogs are not very good markers. That's why. I need to work probably more on it. But I work on a lot of memories. This is called a memory. So I just drop the dummy. I bring her back. Spray. 
and I send her on the retrieve. Now what's different between that and the last one that I did is what? This one I didn't throw, right? So, sit down. It created a dog that's real, sta real patient and steady. Like she wasn't jumping when I dropped that dummy. She, but what did I have to do to set that up? I had to heal her out. I had to pitch it without her breaking. I had to heal her back. I had to ever sit quiet and calm in line. And then I had to be able to send her on her name. And then I had to have her be able to come back. There's a lot of little steps there for that drill. And without the foundation, heal, sit, stay, and come when I call you, I couldn't have done any of that. Right. Well, you know what the value of that little drill is for me, above and beyond a lot of other things? The idea of a dog, shed, antler do shed dogs don't pick up antlers that are thrown. They're never going to, I mean, I saw it once on YouTube, but you're never going to see a deer run through the woods and shed its antler. It just doesn't happen. But what they do is they pick them up off the ground. So they got to go find them and they got to bring them back. I get a lot of people that say, my dog will find them always in training, but he won't find them when they're laying in the field when we go shed hunting. And they think it's because of the scent. Uh, it's because my human scent's not on it. I said, no, it's not because of that. It's because how do you train? What do you, what, well, I throw them for them. They go, there, there's, I can throw it into the thickest, deepest, darkest cover and they'll always go get it and bring it back. I said, sure, because you threw it for them and they're good markers and they run to the spot and they bring it back. But you're never having them pick it up off the ground. So that drill right there, I can heal the dog back and I can wait three minutes and send the dog back. And the dog's memory is, the dog has short-term memory and long-term memory. And I need to develop both. But the short-term memory is like timing and training. If you don't correct a dog or praise a dog within a split second of them doing it, they don't understand why you're correcting or praising. So if, if she jumped off the bed, ran over to me, and then I said, no, 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 get up, she's going to think I said no, 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 no to her coming to me. Not because she jumped off the bed. If she jumps off the bed and I say, ah, 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 the second she's stepping to it, she's going to go, whoops, don't come off the bed. That's timing. This timing got so long that by the time we got back here, it was long enough where she went, I got to run out and pick something up off the ground, not something that was thrown. So my value out of that was teach dogs to pick stuff up off the ground, not thrown. But I couldn't do that drill without the foundation. So regardless of what we're training for, the foundation has got to be there first. And then we just look at the calendar and we go, well, it worked really well to start working into this or working into that and prepare. So I, there is no like black and white answer. It's got to be pretty fluid.